Hello everyone, so now we are going to start with reaction number 12. So we're nearly getting there. Now number 12 is very important. They love to test this in the exams. It's esterification and we have looked at this in previous lessons. Remember when I told you that if we take an alcohol and you combine it with a carboxylic acid, then we form the ester. But now we're going to look at that reaction in more detail. So let's get started. And so there we have the alcohol plus the carboxylic acid, so the alcohol we know because it's got the OH, and we know that in the word alcohol there's an OH. Then we've got the carboxylic acid, which also has an OH, but it also has the double bond carbon attached to the OH. Now, if you can remember, we said that what happens is that a water molecule is going to be released when these two combine. But first, I'm forgetting something. Guys, we need a catalyst. Now that catalyst that we're going to use is H2SO4. And in some of the previous videos, I might have written the word sulfuric acid. Okay, but sulfuric acid is H2SO4. So we said that a water molecule gets released, but I wonder if there are any of you watching who can remember how it works. For example, we could lose this OH and this H over here, or we could lose the following. We could lose this H and this OH. Both of those are going to give us a water molecule, which is great. That's what we want. But we said that the way it works is that after the water molecule has been released, the alcohol part and the carboxylic acid part should still have one oxygen left over. And so the way we can see it right now, this is how it's going to work. Because here we've still got one oxygen and here we've still got one oxygen. If we did it the previous way, that wouldn't have worked out. So that's all that happens. This part and this part get released from the molecule. And so what we have left is the following. And so that's what you would be left with. But then what happens is that we just form a bond between those two. And so what we what the final molecule is, is the following. There we have it. And then we must remember that the HO and the H that came off of these two molecules over here and over here, they're obviously not going to just disappear. They're going to combine and they are going to form water. And so that's it, guys. That is how esters are formed. You take an alcohol, you combine it with a carboxylic acid, you add some sulfuric acid as a catalyst, and you form your ester. Reaction number 12 is now complete. I am so excited because number 13 is super easy. So let's quickly go through that. Number 13 says that we can go from an alkane. If we add a bit of oxygen, we can form CO2 and H2O, which is water. This is called combustion, and this is typically what takes place in the engine of a car and things like that. So it's quite a cool thing, but very, very easy to understand. Probably the easiest out of all of them. So let's take a quick look. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take an alkane, but with this one, I'm not going to draw the structural formula. They don't test it like that in the exams. They just use the molecular formula. So I'm just going to use butane, which is C4H10. How do I know that? Because butane is 4. Remember how we used to look at that? And then we know that any alkane is always going to have the format of 2N plus 2. So if you say 4 times 2, which is 8 plus 2, you get 10. And that's how I've got that over there. And now we just need to add some oxygen. Remember, oxygen is diatomic. And then the products are carbon dioxide and water. It's as easy as that. But now, something we haven't had to look at in any of the previous 12 reactions is balancing. This reaction is not balanced. Because with all the others, we were able to follow exactly what was happening. We could see carbons breaking or hydrogens breaking. And so the formulas were always balanced. But now we're just using a template over here. So have a look here. You've got four carbons there but only one carbon over here. So we're going to have to add a 4 in front of the CO2. Now what we do is we have a look at the hydrogens. We've got 10 on this side, but only 2 over here. So we'll have to add a 5 in the front there, because 5 times 2 is 10. And then lastly, we can check the oxygen. So on this side, we've got 2. But on this side, we've got 8 over here, because 4 times 2, plus another 5. So that gives us 13 oxygens. Now here's where it gets a little bit weird. We've already got 2 oxygens on this side. So I could multiply this one by 13 over 2, because what is 13 over 2 times 2? Well, the 2's cancel, and you end up with 13. So we're going to have to put a 13 over 2 in the front of that. But then remember, we can't leave this as a fraction. So what could we multiply everything with? Well, what is the LCM, or not LCM, LCD, lowest common denominator? Well, that's going to be 2. So we're going to have to multiply everything by 2. So this will become a 2, this will become a 13, this will become an 8, 
and this will become a 10. So the final answer is the following. And that's it. You just need to know that an alkane plus a oxygen will always give you CO2 and H2O. They don't ask you to draw these ones out in the exams. You just need to know how to balance the equation. And that's it, guys. We've done all 13 equations, I mean reactions. Obviously, some of them are still going to be a bit weird for you. You just need to go over them a few more times. And I promise you, once you see the bigger picture, it's awesome. It will make perfect sense. So that's your homework. Just keep going through all these reactions. Do them on a daily basis, every night before bed. Maybe do like four or five, and you'll see it. It'll just start sinking into your brain, and then you'll know it, and it'll make a lot of sense. So that's it, guys. That's the reactions done. Thank you so much for watching.